The London Anime Convention was something completely different from what I expected. This was my very first time attending an anime convention in London, so I'll be comparing it to the Danish anime conventions, because why not? It's difficult not to, as I'm biased anyway. I had my own expectations, not gonna lie. I have never been in London before, so I'm really excited. Actually, I'd expect that this convention would be much bigger compared to Copenhagen one, or even the Fenian one. There definitely should be more cosplayers, games, events, and shows, because like, London is bigger. I really do hope that London will provide a bigger variety of figurines and marriage in general, especially because I fell into Jujutsu Kaisen fandom. I'm really looking forward to buying some figurines with my favorite characters. And I think it should be easy, because I adore Gojo, Nanami, Sukuna, Geto. I remember when I went to the anime convention in Copenhagen, I was looking for a figurine with Kusuriuri from the Monokia, because Monokia is also one of my favorite shows, but I couldn't find anything. Maybe I'll succeed in London, but who knows? Are there even figurines from Monokia? The first thing that caught my attention was the venue. London signed convention was held at Drumshed, which resembled a massive container capable of accommodating thousands of people. The problem was not with the place itself, but with the fact that it was rather challenging to get there. The place was surrounded by construction, making it difficult to locate. There were no signs to guide us, and almost the entire perimeter was blocked off with the construction workers eyeing me suspiciously. Initially I feared that I had arrived at the wrong place, but thank goodness I noticed cosplayers and followed them. On the bright side, I was blown away by how massive this building was and how many people showed up for the event. I was totally expecting organizers to hand out maps, but they didn't, and I found myself lost in there four more times than I could count. I mean, I couldn't even find the bathroom a couple of times. What a shame. Now, compared to the dungeon condition, where we always get these little magazines with all the event info and uh, the map, it was a bit disappointing. But hey, maybe that's even a good thing that we didn't provide maps. Don't cut trees for just two day events. And I almost forgot to mention how chilly it was inside. I didn't expect that. Good thing I had a warm sweater with me. And one more thing. I had no clue, but there wasn't a single charging outlet in drum shed. Not even one. I had a power bank with me, but strangely enough it started acting up on the first day, so I tried to find an outlet to charge my phone, but I didn't succeed. That's why I ended up with fewer recordings than I wanted. But well, it is what it is. So if you're in a London anime convention in drum sheds, pack a power bank, maybe even two just in case, trust me, you won't find a single outlet in the entire building. If I had to rate the access to this location and the building itself, I would give it a 4 out of 10. So what really set it apart from the Danish anime cons was how everything was on one floor just scattered around the same area. You had artist stands mingling with food and merch, there was a dance corner on one side and the photo shoots on the other. It was a pure chaos high. And honestly, I kinda preferred it to our Danish anime cons. We was always fall across two buildings located next to each other, which is a pain, especially in February, when it's really cold and windy and rainy to go back and forth between those buildings. Even for me, when I'm in a jeans and sweater, I can't even imagine how cosplayers manage, especially those with less clothes on them. The Danish anime convention is more organized, with each thing having its own spot. Artists in one room, merch in another, dancing, games, interviews, each in their own separate spaces. The downside of this is that you can't create your own clones and participate in two events happening at the same time. The London convention, on the other hand, is like an open playground where you can shop and still catch a concert or an interview at the same time. I would definitely rate it an 8 out of 10, because some activities like singing contests and photo shoots could use a little bit more privacy to avoid disturbing others. By the way, I really enjoyed the food. You won't believe it, but I tried on Nike for a very first time, and oh my god, it blew my mind. I couldn't even imagine that it will taste like this. It was sweet and it didn't resemble neither the fish nor the meat taste. I can't even imagine how good it must be in Japan, but even at the London Sand Convention it was a solid 10 out of 10. When it comes to merch, it felt a bit limited to me. I almost was like 4 or 5 biggest stands with figurines, and I was lucky enough to find a few figurines from the show I was into. But I have a suspicion that it's because the show is the mainstream. London Sand Convention didn't offer much for the older or lesser known series. But hey, there are tons of amazing artists showcasing their work. I ended up splurging on fan-made merch like keychains, posters, stickers, and even this cool bag with Sato and Sugoro. It's so cool. I rate merch section a uh, 7 out of 10, but artists and uh, fan-made stuff is easily 10 out of 10. You know what really caught me? Oh god. London's anime convention didn't have any cosplay shows or performances on stage. All I got was a quick catwalk with some Genshin and Honkai cosplays that lasted barely 30 minutes and 
that was it. No acting, no singing, no dancing on the stage, no voting for best performance or costume. You know we have it all in Denmark, and considering how big London's air conditioning is, I totally thought we will put on some epic cosplay shows. I'm just surprised. London's air conditioning was a blast. Sure, there were some small downsides, but in overall, I would totally go again. I'm especially itching to cosplay next time, because we had way more photo spots and decorations compared to Copenhagen. Here you normally take photos outside, because why not, architecture is nice, but the convention doesn't provide any decoration. And I can't wait to see what artists come up with for the next year. This time I scored a really unique match just from the artist Sally. Ready to unpack it with me?